Hey everybody, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. So, what sucks more than not being able to mod a guitar the way that the customer wants it to be done? Well, what sucks more is having to tell them that you can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, so I had to get a hold of the owner and let him know that I won't be putting the Floyd Rose that he wanted on his Jackson. Uh, won't be able to do it. The reason being is the string spacing is different than the Jackson Floyd Rose compared to the actual Floyd Rose itself. Now, this would have been a nice upgrade if it would have worked. So what I ended up doing is taking some photos and uh, sending it to the owner of what's going on with it. So on the actual Floyd Rose, being that it's not really that much wider, because the Jackson one is wider than the Floyd Rose one, but string spacing is different. So the Floyd Rose has got a, what did, it, what did I say it was, a uh, 40, I believe it was a 42, get this thing here and set up right all right there's a 42 thousands something like that yeah and the actual one for the actual one for the Jackson that came with the Jackson was a 40 yeah so that's the difference that I'm looking at as far as string spacing goes also because of the way that the strings are spaced uh, it was putting the Floyd Rose off to one side of the opening where I would have to trim the body in order for this to fit properly and then relocate the uh, holes for the sleeves for the screws for the blades to go into so that's out now I remember a long time ago I kind of did the same thing with my Jackson Soloist. I wanted to put a Floyd Rose on there and ended up putting a Floyd Rose Special on there because the Floyd Rose Special was much closer to the same size and everything of the Jackson Floyd Rose that was that's on there. So that's what I ended up doing. So what I got going on over here is I need to knock this edge down over here going across the side of especially down here to really you can feel a little bit of a lip on the frets over here so I've got my file and I'm gonna knock this down a little bit I already checked to see if the frets were level and the frets are level on this thing they're not in bad shape at all just a little bit of wear on the fretboard and that's about it So how am I feeling here? Not too bad compared to what it was, but a little bit makes it better and better and better. Alright, that's much better. Now I gotta get the edges and taper them off. So I wanna get rid of this metal shavings. Turn this around. Turn this. Do the same thing on this side. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So now to finish these guys up. With getting rid of the burr that is on the top of the fret. Which one is this one here? I want the one that is this one here. Get rid of that little burr. 
the file made. Yeah, so that kind of sucks that I had to get a hold of the owner, but he's pretty cool about this, so I didn't want to sit there and promise him that I can get this done for him and then come to find out that it ain't going to fit. And then on top of that, have to chop up the body to make it fit. And I really don't want to sit there and try to cut up a real nice body and have that paint chip all over the place from the router. Now I know that there's ways of masking the body to keep it from chipping, but it's not a guarantee. It actually is just, you know, in case shit happens, but it's not a guarantee. So it could happen, it could still chip, and now what? You know, now I'm going to have to try to customize with the same look or theme that's on that guitar, but with paint and do it by hand. And those points, I've seen them do it and I've got the brush to do it. It's called a uh, goat's, um, goat's beard. And it's a real fine... It's a brush about this long, and the brush is this long, not just with the handle. And what it does is it basically, you dab the paint on there, and you can do a lot of pinstriping work with it. Very tedious, very difficult if you don't know how to do it, and if you never did it before. And uh, it's not like regular painting, because you have to have a real steady hand, and know how to make a straight line. But with the curves that are on this guitar here, masking wouldn't even get me to what that guitar body looks like with that frame on there. So I don't want to even try to attempt it. And I know this, these guitars, they don't go for much. But it's still a nice guitar. I don't want to see anything happen to somebody else's guitar because of trying to mod it like that. So when I get these burrs off of here, make this a nice playable neck. See, the owner and I, when we talked about this guitar, he just wanted me to take the pickup off of it, put the new pickups on, and the Floyd Rose. I said, okay, no problem. But when I got the guitar and I seen, well, there's some scratches on it, and there's some, you know, other things that uh, are a little bit iffy as far as the wiring goes and shit. And I upgraded the pots from what they were didn't use the stock wiring that came with the guitar. I ended up putting new wiring inside. I don't mind doing that stuff. I mean, that's something that uh, I enjoy doing it just as much as the customer likes having it done. And it works out because I give a shit. You know, it's not like that uh, I don't care about the person's guitar. I want to take care of the customer and make sure that when they get the guitar back, you know, they're not going to sit there and say, well, you know, where'd this scratch come from, where'd that come from? And with having video of it, at the same time, you know, they can see the progress, what you've been doing. If they have any questions or want something changed, they can get a hold of you and, you know, we can work something out. But...
beautiful. Looks like a brand new neck. All oiled up. Now to mount it back to the guitar. Or guitar body. Alright, so I came across a little bit of a dilemma here. I've got a neck with a stripped hole. And I went to go put the neck on. Got all the screws in there. Went to go snug them up and this one just kept on turning. So what I got is a piece of oak dowel rod. This would be really strong for this neck. I mean, I could go and get the inserts and put the inserts in here, but it's got two shorter screws at the top and two longer screws at the bottom because of the taper that the back of the body is behind the neck. So my next best choice is I don't have any of the inserts. I have to go and buy some which I'm thinking about getting them anyways. Um, but for right now, plug, redrill. I got my caliper here and I already measured a drill bit for size. Now I gotta measure to depth. I'm using a toothpick for that and a pencil. And the reason why I'm using a toothpick is because a toothpick comes to a point, it is rounded, it doesn't have any, um, you know, anything on it. And I can just stick it right in there, and it'll fit right where the point of the screw would be. And I can sit there and mark my depth on that toothpick. So now I know how far I have to go in with it. So I'll get a piece of masking tape. Now I have some inserts, or not inserts, but some sleeves that go on here that are supposed to stop you from going at a certain depth. Now I have smaller ones. I don't have, or I don't know where they are, the bigger ones that fit on bigger drill bits. And basically what it is is a piece of metal with a set screw in it. You'd put it on the, uh, over the drill, tighten up the set screw to where it is you know, someplace in on this part, not the thread or the uh, blade part of the drill bit, because otherwise it'll chip the drill bit. So what I want to do is match the point up with the line, and go ahead and put my tape around here. And what I'll do is I will take this tape and this here and put it there to see if I'm too deep and I look like I am right on the money so I'm going to go ahead and make somewhat of a flag with this make sure it's tight on there put my bit in the drill now what I should do here is where is it, where is it, where is it I should take a chamfering bit and see how far does it have to go to get to the diameter that I'm looking at here. Yeah, see, that's not going to work very well. I'm not going to give me what I'm looking for. All right, so got the hole here. I'm going to go in reverse first. That's going to give me a flat spot for the drill bit to ride. And I'm not going to go very fast with this. depth that I need. A little bit of a mess here. And I'm going to need my hammer to get that in there. So I've got the drill bit a little bit smaller than the plug itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to taper the tip of the plug with a piece of sandpaper.
little bit more. All right, that looks good. So I tapered the edge of it, so now it sits better on top of the hole. It's going to be a tight fit. Get some tight bond. Get a channel locks to open the tight bond. And my toothpick can serve as a spreader for the glue. Now I'm not worried about this sticking up right now. All I want to do is make sure I get it in this hole and seal this up. Get some glue in the bottom. Get some glue around the plug. And this is going to spread as soon as I start getting it into the wood. That right, doesn't have to be nice and neat. Just as long as I don't get glue all over the place. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. That's in. Uh, wow, I don't have any paper towels around. Hmm. And that ain't going to come out either. That is in there. And it ain't going to go anywhere. So, what do I got here? Okay, I got an old, old rag that I got in the garbage that I can use. Wipe off that old glue. All right. So now tomorrow, after this sets up, it should be fine. I shouldn't have any troubles with cutting this down, and uh, yeah, being able to put a new hole inside there. And if I end up having a troubles with any of the other holes, well, I'll be repeating this probably three more times. So, all right. That's it for now. I gotta wait for that to dry and I will catch up with you all later.